fourth graders, it is Monday, April 27th. And for this week for library, we are going to read Jack Rabbit McCabe and the Electric Telegraph. This is a book in our library that doesn't seem to get checked out very much, but this is a really good book. If you like to run and you like to run really fast and you think that you're really good at running, then you're going to like this book. Um, let's go ahead and get started. This is a 4.7 and I'll put all the information below in the description. Let's get started. This here is the story of Jack Rabbit McCabe who was born to run. At birth, his legs were so long they looped like a pretzel and his father had to add an extra axle to the baby carriage. When he was a three-year-old, his mama dressed him in long pants every morning, but by noon, his sock top showed, and by five o'clock, he was wearing shorts. Little Jack chased whatever would run, hogs, dogs, even his own shadow. As he got older, he raced trains flying past his house in windy flats. For years, the engineers cheered him on, and by the time he turned 18, he'd beat every stagecoach, antelope, and locomotive in the territory. Perched on the edge of the Great Plains, the town of Windy Flats also counted on Jack Rabbit's speed when a message had to get out fast, like to fetch old Doc Dobbins to patch up some ninny from the Double Daria Club who fell while climbing up St. Bertha's church steeple. Whenever the sky turned green and twisters bore down, Jack Rabbit rounded up every wandering chick and child and plunked them safe back home. On Sunday afternoons, he ran in horse races out at the fair, country fair, or the county fairgrounds. Folks who knew Jack Rabbit always bet on him to place first. Since he earned a piece of the pot, he made good money. Then one day, something new came to Windy Flats, the electric telegraph. Out east, telegraph wires already crisscrossed the landscape, carrying messages quicker than the mail by using electricity. Each city and town connected by the wires had a telegraph and an operator who sent and received messages in Morse code an alphabet of dots and dashes. Okay, does anybody have an idea of what's going to happen since the electric poles have been installed? The first week the telegraph company showed up in Windy Flats, there was plenty of talk. I don't believe any newfangled contraption can carry a mass mass message faster than Jack Rabbit said Mayor Babel. Nor do I, said John Festoon, Judge Festoon. The telegraph man overheard their boast and said, how about a race between your fella and this here electric telegraph? Sandy Bluff just got themselves an operator. That's pert near 25 miles as the crow flies. Of course the mayor had no trouble convincing Jack Rabbit to race. Why, yes, sir, Jack Rabbit said. I can outrun anything. All right, so Jack Rabbit and the Electric Telegraph are going to race. So who do you think is going to win? On the day of the big showdown, folks came from miles around. Windy Flats felt as festive as a flag-waving jubilee. A brass band played and Mayor Babel spoke. Then the mayor carefully wrote down the same message on two slips of paper. He handed one to the Telegraph Man and the other to Jack Rabbit. To start the race, Judge Festoon hollered to everyone, or so everyone could hear, On your marks, get set! A finger hovered just above the telegraph key. Jack Rabbit leaned way over with one foot already in the air. Go! Down went the telegraph key. Off went Jack Rabbit McCabe. Jackrabbit pumped his legs, kicking up storm clouds of dust. 
on the flat roof of the mercantile. Children whooped and hollered as they watched him roar like a tornado down the road and out of sight. The crowd held its breath, and in a few moments, a reply came clattering back as the telegraph key jumped and smacked all on its own. The telegraph man quickly read the code and shouted, Message received! Stop! Sandy Bluff operator! And the crowd let its breath go in one great sigh. Aw, shucks! Where's Jackrabbit McCabe? They all asked each other. Well, sir, Jack Rabbit ran in record time, nine and a half minutes to Sandy Bluff, but there was no brass hand band to welcome him, only a telegraph tacked up on the door of the depot. It read, as that fine statesman and inventor Benjamin Franklin once said, energy and persistence conquers all things. Stop. Jack Rabbit pulled the mayor's me message out of his pocket and read it with the Sandy Bluff telegraph operator. Yep, they're the same. I guess I got beat. Jack Rabbit felt lower than a snake's navel. He took a slow stagecoach ride home. All right, so Jack Rabbit McCabe lost against the electric telegraph. Meanwhile, Mayor Babel paced and thought. He was barely listening to the telegraph man's talk till he heard, say, who's gonna be your telegraph operator? Suddenly, the mayor perked up. What about Jackrabbit McCabe, he said. If his fingers are half as speedy as his long legs, we're in business. And so, when Jackrabbit finally arrived back in Windy Flats, Mayor Babel was there to greet him. Good news, my friend. How would you like to become the first telegraph operator of our fair city? Jackrabbit's shy grin grew, quickly grew into a face-splitting smile. He jumped up with a big wahoo and ran six times around the town. So Jackrabbit sent away for a Morse code book and when it came, he practiced every minute and before long, his fingers flew like a banjo's players, strumming that telegraph key. Day in and day out, he sent and received messages and of course, hand-delivered telegrams in a flash. He even teamed up with the local typesetter who printed the news that came over that wire, linking Windy Flats to the whole entire country. And who do you think delivered the newspaper every evening? That's right, Jack Rabbit, who could run through every speck of town as fast as a squirrel hightails it up a tree, and what's more, land a paper at every door. Now I ask you, was there ever any fellow so all fired expeditious as Jackrabbit McCabe? The end. Stop. All right, so this is a good book. So he was really sad when he lost because he was really competitive, as you can tell in the story. He was really competitive and he could run faster than anything and beat everything. But when the electric telegraph came in, he couldn't, he couldn't beat it, could he? And it made him really sad. But when they asked him to be the operator, he was really good at it, wasn't he? So this just kind of shows that when you're really good at something, if you all of a sudden seem to fail at it and maybe you're not as good as you were once were at it, it does, it's okay because usually you're gonna be good at something else just like him. So he was super fast at running, but then when something came along that beat him, it's okay because he was asked to do something else and he was really good at it too. So he worked hard to run, which also told of his character because he worked hard to learn how to use um, the codes for Morse code. So um, a really neat exercise or a research exercise for this would be if you were interested in looking up uh, doing a search for the electric telegraph so you can see what that is for yourself and looking up Morse code. So there's like, Lots of pictures and videos out there that you can look up for those things. Those are really cool things. They happened a long time ago when this, when this was all invented a long time ago. So that would be really cool if you wanted to do some research. All right, so I hope that you guys have a wonderful Monday. And I hope that you have a wonderful week. And 
I'll see you next week. Bye.